Welcome to Intermediate German Grammar, presented by the German Studies Program at Elon University. In this video, you'll learn two things about relative pronouns. First, we'll look at why to use relative pronouns. What you'll see is that relative pronouns make powerful connections between ideas. Second, we'll investigate how relative pronouns work. You'll see that relative pronouns are comparatively simple to use. Let's start with why to use relative pronouns. Here's an example of an idea that is difficult to express without a relative pronoun. In English and in German, you need the relative pronoun, which is highlighted blue here, to connect the word book to the idea that you bought it. By the way, in English, you can drop the relative pronoun that. The sentence will still make sense if you say, where's the book I bought? In German, however, you cannot drop the relative pronoun. Now let's say that you want to convey two things about the University of Heidelberg, that it was founded in 1386, and that it is the oldest university in Germany. One solution is to create two sentences, as you see here. But sometimes, good writing calls for longer, more flowing sentences with explicit connections between ideas. To make these two sentences into a longer, more flowing sentence, you could use a relative pronoun. In German, as in English, the relative pronoun lets you join two short sentences into one longer one with clear connections between ideas. Here's one more example. Let's say you want to talk about the film The Lives of Others. You want to say that it's about two artists who are loyal to the East German government, but who nevertheless see their lives destroyed by the regime. In German as in English, you could certainly write a series of short sentences. But good writing sometimes involves longer, smoother sentences with explicit connections between ideas. The relative pronouns in both English and German accomplish that goal. Now we've answered the first question. We saw that relative pronouns create direct links between ideas and create longer, more flowing sentences. In that sense, they are similar in function to conjunctions. If that's a new concept to you and you want to learn more about conjunctions, see the playlist. Now let's explore how to use relative pronouns. You'll find that it's quite simple. As you can see, relative pronouns are based on the direct articles der, die, and das. For example, in the sentence here, der Mann, der da drüben steht, heißt Karl, the relative pronoun der, equivalent to English who, is exactly the same as the article der in der Mann heißt Karl. The same is true with the relative pronoun den. It's exactly the same as the article den. In other words, in situations where you would use the accusative article den in place of the nominative article der, you would also use the relative pronoun den. The same is true of using the dative dem in place of the nominative der. The only time this rule does not hold, in other words, the only time the relative pronoun isn't the same as the article, is in the genitive. Here, it's simplest to use a different strategy. In place of using a relative pronoun that resembles the article, you'll simply translate the English word whose. So now we've looked at why and how to use relative pronouns. Be aware that the examples you saw used masculine nouns. Relative pronouns in the feminine, neuter, and plural work the same way, although their form varies by gender and number. Lists of relative pronouns in German are readily available online. There's one more point to be made. Relative pronouns work a little bit like conjunctions in the sense that they join two clauses and kick the conjugated verb in their clause to the end. So when you're using a relative pronoun, remember that they, that they use subordinate word order sending the conjugated verb to the end of the clause. 
That concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit us on the web or follow us on Facebook or Twitter.